This is a Podco original. But Why like, does Daniel dropkick people? Do they not? <laughs> I don't know, because he can. <laughs> you guys struggle with any days of the week other than all of them, Lindsay? Uh, Daniel, hold on to your nuts, right? <laughs> well, as long as you can. You no, know what, Devin? No, I, I, I would love to get you a pension. A pension? <laughs> you, you want me to have a pension? Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi. back to Ned's Declassified Podcast Survival Welcome Guide. Back. And if you got something that vibrates, turn it on right now. Hey. <laughs> As you listen. Hey. <laughs> like turn a up. toothbrush will brush your teeth. Would they, uh, yeah, hygiene, on dental it. hygiene okay. does matter. It does matter. I'm so sorry. Reel it in. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't do that on Ned's We don't do that anymore. No, we do. Just reel it Reel it in. Reel it all the way back. Great. Just yeah. reel it in. I, I do have a question for you guys. Has it been... Long enough. I feel like we haven't talked to the audience. Uh, is there anything to say about the us uh, canceling the tour? Oh, hey. Should we, should we just reference it at all? Uh, I'm sorry, sorry so guys. That's a, sorry, guys. A I'm spot. sorry. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, and, I, yeah, and the know. reason we haven't talked about it, it w is it was very painful and emotional to cancel it. Yeah, it was, it was weird. It ended up being like a... A situation that wasn't as productive <laughs> as we would have wanted. And it we're to be. still learning in this business. We're oh, a yeah. year and a half into this podcast, and we are just getting our legs under us. And minus just the podcast, there are so many other moving parts that we're trying to add to something that's really, really just like a little baby creation still. Yeah. Um, and so we tried it this way with these specific people and it didn't give us the outcome we wanted or needed. Didn't bring it, didn't give us any opportunity to bring anything to you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we we're, we're, we're regrouping. We're, we're going to regroup, but yeah. we love the live show. We love the live show. Oh, and we're still doing live shows. We're just not doing this tour with that group yeah to all of you who bought tickets uh love, love you. you yeah so love much you. wanted to be there uh couldn't make this round work and these cities work and these venues work like basically the plan all fell apart in a very quick amount of time and uh i'm gonna say a phone it, call and a half and it was it was foiled we were sabotaged and it was and it hurt like it hurt it yeah. it bummed us out because oh, yeah. we, we loved, were really looking forward dude, to it i haven't even posted on instagram no in like, i haven't dude, <laughs> like a month dude no I'm like, damn. It, it's taken me time to just re like i feel like anytime you set out to do something and the expectation is so far from what you set out to do also known as Failure. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, uh, it hits in a really deep place, and I wish it didn't. I wish I could just take it on the chin, but no. It like it 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 affected all of us. We were like, oh fuck, we set out to do this. We have to cancel, um, and it it took an emotional toll. That's why we haven't referenced it uh, publicly yet. <laughs> but Bruh. to those of you who bought tickets, we love you. Thank yeah. you. We want to be there. We want to come to all the cities. We're gonna kind of figure out how to make it work um this plan that we set out just yeah but check us out at Sp splatcon if you're in california you can come see us there i mean it depends on when we air this episode but yes oh <laughs> never mind maybe <laughs> i know it's hard to talk happened. about i don't but, know uh, but that is a testament to the fact that you guys sometimes you got to do the work yourself like uh, i i really want to get better at delegating but don't expect what you don't inspect all right People are gonna, that my uncle you say that all the time it's, it's a bar don't expect what you don't inspect um, and you know, we didn't really inspect what these people were doing and they kind of left us, uh, hanging out the dry. We're not used to that business model in LA. Like in LA, they're like years ago, or at least when we were coming up, there were teams of people each with a specialty that they would accomplish for you, for the team, for the good and success of the whole project. And now, uh, there is no crew. Like everybody just... Found out how to do it from their bedroom or something. Yeah, <laughs> just collect a check and then yeah, pass it and up to higher management. And so now, like it, they're it's kind of impotent. Like oh, yeah. anything, because it was kind of like if it wasn't a sure thing by doing no lift at all, then it wasn't going to happen. Like posting something or whatever, there was there was just no PR lift at all, which is not something that I'm used to. I don't think we. Like, yeah. we are not used to having to take everything into our own hands, also, especially with r relationships we don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in those, those like, like my biggest thing, I'm, I'm a real research and development guy. The team we had on board did not research our listener data and assign cities that 
we yeah. have the biggest impact in, you know, and they can't, they gave us this whack excuse of like, oh, well, we were trying to pick the, uh, the 15 lowest cities on your list <laughs> so that we could ask for more money next time. I'm like, bro, no, that's, that's There's not going to be a sense. next time, you what stupid you bitch. About, it's not bro? just a laying fucking thing where she's like, there's not going to be a pool, stupid. you stupid bitch. <laughs> But yeah, they they got us. They got us. So cheers to those guys. Oh, cheers, little, man. Little, little so switch. we love you. We'll figure out our next uh, dates and where we're going to go next and make it work. And we'll see you there. Because our live podcast is so oh, freaking fire. fun. Man. All it's these so fun. Cookie generated graphics, motion. Gra- we, we love it. It's awesome. We can't wait to bring it to you. And you're involved in the tour, too. Actually, those assets are like like one of my favorite parts no, of the show. So, it's They're so, fun. so the great. So you did so good on them, Dan. Um, all right, we got a rewatch for you today. Uh, we're in season two. We got Mondays. Uh, great episode covering a topic, especially in school. Mondays were really relevant. Uh, these days, because, uh, you know, I we have we all have an alternative lifestyle. Um Mondays don't mean uh, anything to me. Sunday scaries that people talk about. I, I don't have a regular Monday through Friday schedule, so I work mm-hmm. on weekends sometimes. Like, there's no... Monday doesn't hold the value it does uh, for the 9 to 5 or school-going kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but damn, it was a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mondays always hurt. Yeah, it was um, the end of the good times. So this was written by Scott Fellows, directed by Savage Steve, let's do a recap. Yeah, yeah. You got your boy, Devi, doing the recap today. There you go. Okay. I hope I can live up to Daniel's bar, you know? No, you got it. Okay. Uh, We open on James K. Polk on a Monday. An absolute disaster scene in the hallway. Students are wandering the halls, lost and tired and afraid. Monroe says the cutest little good morning to Moe's. She growls at him, not unlike Lindsay if we message the group chat before 1 p.m. Lisa Zemo and Coconut (laughs) Head are immune to Mondays and are chipper as morning birds. But some students are highly allergic to Mondays. A bedheaded, disgruntled Ned enters frame. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was a Scott Fellows. You he, almost laughed. He gave me that line. Reading. Did you see as you were turning? You almost laughed. How do you spell that? Uh, I wrote fl. Oh, f l u h h h h. But oh, no g in there. Okay. But th- there's definitely a g in there. Like yeah, fl. Little <laughs> uh, I did see. I almost laughed, and I said, "Devin, you're a bad actor." I took it back Ned, three times to make sure I Ned saw Mose. what I saw. <laughs> anyway, Ned Mose and Cookie walk and talk <laughs> while stepping over students sleeping in the halls. Ned tells them he hates Mondays and he needs to find a way to survive them. (laughs) Cookie shares his personal tip. He wears his favorite pair of underwear on Mondays, a tip that a family friend would many years later bring up to me at a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. As her favorite tip from Ned's because she still follows it. Oh. Oh. Yikes. Bacterial vaginosis. That's where that starts, right? I mean, are are they clean? (laughs) <laughs> uh, you would Her think they're clean. Oh, 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 oh she washes them back oh, okay. in the closet. Okay, yeah, on. that's the whole point. She likes that funky stuff. Oh my hey. god! <laughs> 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 that seals it up like blue. <laughs> anyway, Ned says we need a plan better than undies. We need a great big plan to make Mondays fun days. Hey. And then he gets hit with a door. Mm. Ow! Mm. Moses in with the plan as long as Ned never says fun days I don't again. understand that. Was she just being a bitch? Yeah, you being, okay. a, being a little bitch Got on it. Monday. Got it. <laughs> as long as you never say, you're just raining on my parade. Sorry. You're yucking my yum. Oh. Okay. Next, we see Vice Principal Krubs walking, uh, waking up Gordy from a midday Monday mop nap. Nice. He says if he catches him doing that again, he'll fire him. Ooh. Gordy passes out immediately. The gang <laughs> picks him up and wakes him up. They have to help him. They go meet in the janitor's closet and they plead with him. You can't get fired. Who's going to give us manly advice? And Mo says, or let us borrow your master keys. Oh, by the way, thanks. And she tosses him back the master First keys of all, to the school. What the f- was I thinking the subtext on that was? What do you mean? I don't know what I would like. I tried to look at my face and then think of anything that I would have been doing. Like, it was such a weird. I don't know. It was just so weird. Anyway, go on. I loved it. Uh, Gordy explains, I can't help it. There's a bird that keeps me up on Sundays when I'm trying to recover from my weekend antics, Mm -hmm. which I'll tell you more about when you're 30. Gordy goes to sleep in a hammock in the closet. Which we are all past. Uh, Cookie says, 
He'll take this one since Ned and Moe's are useless on Mondays. Gordy's hammock falls and Cookie is on Gordy duty. Um, it never gets fully flushed out in the show, but uh, Scott Fellows and Darren Norris, who played Gordy, they came up with this backstory for oh, Gordy yeah. um, that if you haven't heard Darren's episode and you want to hear from him, like go back to, uh, I don't know, the first year of this podcast and watch the Darren episode. But uh, him and Scott came up with this backstory for Janitor Gordy, which is he's actually a very wealthy uh, trust fund man, family man. Um, but the only way he gets access to the trust fund is if he yeah. works uh, a job. Consistent job. Um, yeah. So that's why he's the laziest janitor in the world and doesn't give a shit is he's just there so that on weekends he can uh, be his trust fund uh, Bruce Wayne self. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. Cookie's on Gordy duty. That's his mission for the episode. He's got to figure out how to keep Gordy awake so he doesn't get fired. And Ned and Moe's need to beat Mondays. This entire episode plays out over many weeks of Mondays. Um, so Ned and Moe's need to beat Mondays. They walk into the hall and see a poster for the zoo with a monkey on it. Ned mm -hmm. gets an idea. Cut to Ned holding a capuchin monkey. Monkey Mondays. That'll <laughs> solve it. Monkeys make everything better. Monroe let them borrow it from his zoo lady friend. She pops in and says, that's right. Just don't scare it. Uh -huh. Moe's relents. You know, I got to admit, it is Monday and I do feel better. <laughs> All of a sudden, our freaky little monkey puppet gets frightened and begins to scream. Yeah. Moe's and Ned start to scream as well, which is also <laughs> part of the intro of it Ned. Of the he intro. screams. It's people, such a funny People shot. literally bring it up and they're like, oh, it's the show with the monkey. I'm like, well, there was only yeah, one. Yeah, the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one one, one moment. Yeah. Um, so Moe's and Ned start to scream. The monkey attacks Ned. Moe's pulls that little fucker off his face and tosses it into the room. Monroe and Zoo Lady with a net give monkey chase. Ned crosses Monkey Mondays off his list to make Mondays fun days, but is determined to figure it out. He will not give up. Moe says, I think the monkey pooped on your head. Ooh. Ooh. Which I, Ooh. oh yeah, never mind. The, it does get up on your face, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. there you yeah, go. It, it was trying to scratch my eyes out. Yeah. Um, cut to Cookie helping Gordy, who is asleep wearing Cookie's modified Cram Master Wake Master, complete with fake open eyes and motion activated robotic exoskeleton mm. to make him appear awake when Krubs is nearby. Mm. Krubs appears and the exoskeleton takes uh, Gordy's body and moves it with a mop. Krubs is happy with what he sees. It worked. Ned tells Cookie, good job, but be careful with the Cram Master. That thing brainwashed me. <laughs> now, whenever I have a problem I can't solve, I see Benedict Arnold and Abe Lincoln on my shoulder. <laughs> um, the Gordy robot saunters off. Cookie follows. Monroe and Zoo Lady give monkey chase through the hall. How are they going to solve Mondays? Let's try Megaphone Mondays. They shout at each other. Maybe the megaphones are a little loud. Just then, Gordy falls asleep. The wake master crashed, and Krubs is about to see Gordy. They blow the megaphone uh, alarm in his ear and wake him up. It <laughs> works. Krubs walks by. Gordy immediately passes out. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not tired from a bird. He is on opioids. Next, <laughs> Moe's and Ned try. Next, Moe's and Ned try Macchiato Monday. Yeah, his, his explanation. A bluebird keeps me, <laughs> bluebird keeps me awake on Sunday night. Just a nights. singular bluebird. A bird. single bird. Also, all the drugs I was taking. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ned, uh, next Moe's and Ned try Macchiato Mondays. Ned says, my mom says they really give her a boost to get through the day. And then we cut to Ned and Moe's cracked out and jittery like the little tweakers that they are. Hey, do you, um, do you want to go back to an acting class to figure out how to hold cups to look like they have something in them? Oh, he did a bad job uh, on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> did he? <laughs> Wow. He in the bottom three him. that I've ever seen. He literally goes like this at one point. <laughs> he holds it forward. Might as well wow. be little, little nipples. <laughs> like, wow. well, we, you know, I drank it. <laughs> I drank it already. You drank mine too? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, next up is Matzo Ball Mondays. Hey. Moe's is very unimpressed. Ned's running out of M words to pair with Mondays. Moe's mm -hmm. asks, where are the matzo balls? 
the monkey. <laughs> the monkey's little paws grab at a bucket of matzo balls. He's crazed. He starts throwing matzo balls at Ned and Moe's and the rest of the cafeteria like a damn assassin. Dang. Nailing everyone with matzo balls. Hey. The cheerful coconut head gets hit by one and says, oh, Monday, what surprise will you bring me next? Yeah. And then the monkey rampages and obliterates Coco with a flurry Ooh. of matzo balls, taking him to the ground shrieking. Nice. Suck. No one is safe. It's like this monkey has eight arms from an MLB shortstop. Yes. So <laughs> monkey. Talk that talk. Talk that talk. <laughs> Ned gives up. Okay, Monday, you win. And he goes to leave the cafeteria. And this was the moment where behind the scenes, they lined up crew members to throw matzo balls at me oh, yeah. while Ned leaves the cafeteria. <laughs> Real fun time. Lasers. Real fun time on set. Lining up an army of crew with a bone to pick they at their that. little asshole lead. They love that. And dense matzo balls. <laughs> not not hot and soft from the soup they're sitting in, cold and dense, uncooked. Man. <laughs> oh, they they pelted me with that those things. That was incredible though, doing that scene through the fight and yeah, just, like, yeah, just having the scene like, while Mott's yeah, balls are just, just it's a goddamn <laughs> war zone. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. A dejected Ned walks down the hall running into Cookie, who has a new wake master, one yeah. that involves shocking Gordy awake, mm -hmm. a true torture device. Yeah. He gets shocked and still passes out, maybe from the electric charge. Krubs comes by and fires him for sleeping, but... Just then, the monkey begins pelting crubs with matzo balls, and Gordy can save his job if he catches the monkey. Uh -oh. Dejected Ned continues to mope around. He is really, he is given up. Ned, the man with the plan, the man who's always down to give tips, hey. he has been defeated mm. by Mondays, and he has mm -mm. given up. Oh, he no. sits next to the cheerful coconut head and Lisa Zemo. Coco asks, what's wrong with Ned? Lisa he says, asks it I, so I don't even know the words. Dude, I know the <laughs> he, way he it's asked like a it, porcelain figure. The I, way he said, <laughs> I watched it three times. I was like, What's wrong, wrong with, with Ned? Ned? <laughs> what is it? What is he it said it like that? a little Victorian doll. Yes, wow. What's with wrong Ned? with Ned? <laughs> and Lisa says, He's allergic to Mondays, like I'm allergic to cats, dogs, trees, nuts, and rat Fat videos, videos that, that exploit women. women. Hey. Yay, Ooh. early 2000s feminism. Hey. I feel like that was Michelle Fellows. Probably. All day maybe, long, yeah. maybe. Mose joins Mose sits down and joins them. She says, I've never seen him like this. He just sort of gave up. Huh. He just couldn't make Mondays fun days. You say it in full earnest, and <laughs> uh, it's my favorite. It's so good. He just couldn't make Mondays fun days. <laughs> You've also come around to fun days by this point. Right, right. Um, all right, so dejected Ned hallucinates Abe Lincoln on one of his shoulders, trying to motivate him not to give up. Benedict Arnold shows up on the other side, and we get a little President's Day joke about sales and capitalism. Uh, Ned <laughs> asks his imaginary figures to move to the desk since looking at them on his shoulders hurts his neck. They poof on the desk, and Abe Lincoln, played by the same actor as Teacher Quest, um, implores him not to give up up and Benedict Arnold agrees, tells him if the British hadn't given up, he would have been on the five dollar bill. Uh -huh. um, Ned, Wait, qu uh, quick question: Does Benedict Arnold was he anybody else in the show, or he just specifically he came in to do that? Just Benedict Arnold, from what I remember. Wait, was, was, he was never on any other episodes, though. The people on the show. He was. He as was Benedict no, Arnold, yeah. but not. That's any like other a running gag. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Um, Ned finally asks the cheerful Lisa and Coco how they beat Mondays. They say, that's easy. And then the monkey arrives to scratch all their eyes out and eat their brains. Yo, speaking of that, <laughs> do you guys remember that chimpanzee, like, ripping that lady's whole face off? You remember that? Oh, I have a no. lot on chimp attacks if we want to go oh, there. Oh, you know a but lot about chimp attacks? Yeah, don't. These monkeys, they're, they're dangerous, guys. They're dangerous. Yeah. Chimps are scary as hell. Well, definitely. I know that, but I don't remember a specific woman getting her face ripped off. Oh, no, she, she did. She ripped her whole, like, R Ripped face it. Off. And what about that guy who also, like, was mauled by, like, a couple of them? I don't know. He was, like, a zookeeper or whatever. Yeah. Like, his shit was undone. Like, Yo. when you look at his... <laughs> he, when That's you look cold. at it, like, half of his skull is taken Yo, off. Uh, his eyes, his fingers bitten off. Here's his genitalia bitten off. Yo. Like... And because they said, sorry, <laughs> that the ahead. chimps know that those areas mean something to people. To people. Yeah, see, chimps, they, they actually have emotional intelligence 
they want they so they mean hurt it. your feelings <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're really out there trying to you know scar you emotionally you know they, like animals instinctual like violence that's fine i'll pick a tiger if you give me like a Maybe a twenty by twenty foot cage. I prefer to be in there with a the tiger than the chimpanzee. Absolutely, that chimpanzee is going to take it you for a bad. ride. Oh yeah, that yeah. That tiger doesn't hurt your feelings. need it. A tiger doesn't know feelings. Yeah, but a that chimp, chimp needs it. Wants to hurt your feelings. So sorry. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. And they make it a slow death too, man. They get those sensitive areas first. They get the sensitive areas, make sure and they hurts. they can do so much damage without taking you, without killing without you. Killing That's you. the I mean, scary yeah. part. A tiger will probably tiger will kill you. Like yeah. Oh my gosh. I prefer that. Seriously. Tiger, elephant, or chimpanzee? Taking that chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. what, I'm taking that, elephant. I'm taking that elephant every day. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, every tiger, day. bear, chimpanzee. Yeah. Which one are you taking? I'm, 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 tiger, bear, I'm chimpanzee. I'm taking the bear, dude. <laughs> I kind of would. That tiger, he'll, he's you, low. You're, you're going to die, right? Well, no, not no, necessarily just, against the bear. You're talking in one-on-one -on -one battle? No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking, about, talking I'm just talking straight about to just battle. be in the room. Yeah. Like, that tiger might... Be okay, but that chimp. A tiger's gonna, gonna eat to the you. fuck out of you, bro. That tiger is going I'm, to I'm, eat. I'm, look, 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 I'll take it. Fuck well out fed. Of you. Well <laughs> fed. They're well fed animals. <laughs> they're there's no reason. Yeah, but there's no reason chimp, for them to attack. There is. A chimp they're could be well fed and still, still muck you up. <laughs> take your Same whole with the freaking scalp, bro. Off, dude. Scalping, skin. I, I'm taking the tiger because I think they're most likely to kill me fully. <laughs> oh, a, bear, one, a bear will maul you and maybe just step on you and leave you there, and wait, a chimp mm -hmm. might just maul you and leave you there wounded. Why do bears do that? What do you mean? Just like, to like, people and like go? for fucking fun? No, I get, I, I get it. But <laughs> why like, does Daniel dropkick people? Do they not? <laughs> I don't know. Because he can. Wait, do, hey, do they can. not need like shit? What was I just? Saying? Wait, like, like some oh, type of. So, so result. you're saying because I, I read about bear attacks too, and they said that they really do just take like chunks yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, people. That's what I mean. They'll what? just bite a fucking. Because they don't care if it's dead. They, they don't. They don't necessarily like. They're not doing it necessarily yeah. for food they don't need you it's fucking so dominant and and they're fucking massive it's like probably part fucking sport to them like let me just fucking chew your shoulder off and then step on you and walk away fuck it thanks to magic spoon for sponsoring this episode of ned's declassified podcast survival guide magic spoon is a nostalgically delicious adult friendly cereal packed with protein minus the sugar. Every serving of Magic Spoon has 13 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and four grams of net carbs, so you can feel good about eating cereal. They also have 10 flavors that all taste just like the cereal you loved as a kid. Their most popular are fruity, cocoa, frosted, and peanut butter. But there are so many more, like blueberry muffin, cinnamon roll, birthday cake, honey nut, and maple waffle. I love that Magic Spoon makes it so easy for me to eat more protein when I'm too tired to cook. I'm also such a snacker, and I really get cravings for something sweet at night. A bowl of Magic Spoon hits the spot. My taste buds are happy, and so is my body. My favorite is the fruity flavor. Get $5 off your next order of delicious cereal at magicspoon.com slash neds. Or look for Magic Spoon in your nearest grocery aisle. That's magicspoon.com slash neds for $5 off. Magic Spoon. Hold on to the dream. After all, oh, I am a dude. bear. That is, that is pretty truly wild. Horrifying. That is pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. That's why I'm choosing the tiger in your guys' fucked up scenario because I'm hoping the tiger just takes me. Yeah. 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 The chimp, it's going to be painful before yeah, I don't death. want chimp. A chimp would do little, little like. Ooh. Yeah, the biting off of fingers is horrible. Chimp would torture you, dude. Yeah, Tim, You'd be Tim tortured to death. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm They're good. so yeah. strong. Back, back to your back to your story. <laughs> They're so strong. Where were we? <laughs> uh, something about the monkey ripping their eyes out. <laughs> yes, yes. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> God. Wait, through the matzo balls. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So. Uh, Ned's about to get tips from Coco and Lisa Zemo, and then the monkey arrives to pull off their genitals and eat them. But <laughs> Don't pull off. Got her right on the rip, Celsius. Rip it off. Got her oh. right on the Celsius. Oh, All oh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. In the nostrils. Got her. Anyway. <laughs> it burns. Um, right before the capuchin can do its lethal uh, blow, uh, Gordy nets him. Gordy now has a birdcage around his head with two bluebirds in it. Truly, truly dumb. 
just yeah. truly, <laughs> truly <laughs> beautiful. Wait to keep him awake. No, yeah, beautiful a dumb truly comedy, stupid like perfect com- dumbness. Just stupid. Uh, so Gorgon has a birdcage around his head with two bluebirds in it. He's wide awake. <laughs> Cookie realized if one bluebird could keep him awake all night. Two birds could keep him awake all day. Simple math. <laughs> Fully logical. Yes. No issues there. Mm-mm. A foolproof oh, solution. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we get a little wrap up. Krubs nods at Birdcage Head Gordy. Ned talks to Cam about Mondays. Uh, Cam short for camera. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, says to wear your favorite outfit on Mondays. He takes the undies tip further. Uh, it's a good tip, honestly. If you're feeling some type of way about a, a certain day of the week, wear your favorite fucking outfit. That'll give you a little fucking uh, dopamine. Where are those um, police chips? Yeah. <laughs> Ned uh, kisses. Okay, Ned walks into the cafeteria, kisses his hand, and says, Monday. As he walks into the, the cafeteria and lovingly slaps the word Monday on the <laughs> menu on the wall. And I vomited and shit when I saw that moment. It was so, it's so dumb. It's so cringy. It's so, I don't know. What are you talking it's about? Just, it went over my head. What the I fuck loved happened? it. No, I, I actually just, it went over my head. Monday, actually. it's just... <laughs> And wait, oh, and you it's, slap the wall yeah, like just, a, oh, okay, okay, okay. It comes out of nowhere. He like gives this tip Monday. and then walks into himself. Now Ned loves Mondays oh, okay. and does nice. just the most absurd <laughs> gesture yeah. of loving Monday. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, he makes. In out what other scenario would you do worst, that? You think? In no other scenario. <laughs> this is <laughs> Monday, and then touches Monday. Uh, <laughs> you know Scott Fellows uh, made you do that. Yeah. He showed you how to do it. Yeah, he said like this, you know, like a human would do. <laughs> would he? Um, anyway, I just I just loved it. It was so dumb. Uh okay. Um he Ned shares the special uh Lisa Zemo tip, which is she packs a favorite and special lunch on Mondays. Also a good tip. Make Mondays your favorite lunch day. Ned uncovers a unbelievable Unbelievably massive ham sandwich that both him and Moe's are excited for. Mm. Coconut Heads Monday is uh, going to a movie after school, so he has something to look forward to all day long. These are the Monday tips. That's actually a great one. That's a good one. The, the, like, they're all good, but the yeah. last one's real. Yeah, it's a good real one. Good. Have something you know. If you know that day, you have an emotional dip. Give yourself something at the mm-hmm. end of the day mm-hmm. that you can get to. Just have it's a, little, a good. little bong there waiting for you when you get back home. Yeah. As we got older, yes. As yeah, we got older, happened. that became the thing, right? You guys, I'm sober. Oh, good. That's that's great. Yeah. Sorry, so forgive me. For that. Yeah. No I'm, bong ribs, I'm guys. really no taking a back. No bong ribs. A bong. A bong. <laughs> I'm taking a bong. <laughs> You've had enough drugs, Lindsay. Thank you. Um, Monroe wheels in uh, his TV to the schoolroom and says, Hey, everyone. Thanks to Ned. You can all enjoy Movie Mondays. Yay! Yeah. Ned did it. He made Mondays fun days, and they start a movie called The Wonderful World of Monkeys. We see Ned hallucinating his historical figures, and that's the epi. Woo! Monday! Monday. Uh, that was fun, uh, fun, fun episode. I think a relevant uh, episode. I think Mondays is a good topic I in love, school and in a lot of people's lives. I love the montage Monday thing. <laughs> that the taking place over several Mondays. Yeah. Just yeah. as yeah, that it's all Mondays. Trying to mine the solution. Mine the solution to your Mondays. Yeah. Do you guys I, struggle with any days of the week other than all of them, Lindsay? Just uh, Daniel? ones that end in yeah. Y. The ones that end in Y, yeah, they're the worst. Um, yeah, I mean, hey. Monday and just just hyping yourself up for for anything when you've had like a kind of lull, having to get back and gear up for work, whatever day that might fall on. It can be there's there's a little bit of anxiety sometimes associated with it. You yep. get a little. They call it the Sunday scaries. Here. Sunday scaries. Yeah. That's what they call it. Is that like oh I was just a person all weekend and now I have to go back and be a robot at my job? Oh, mm, yeah. I felt that when I was at my my day job like. I'd be in the flow of work. I, I worked four days a week at that job. like, And so I'd be in the flow of that. I'd get those three days off, get to actually be like putting time into things I wanted to do or fucking just relax, whatever. Uh, and I would get that little like, 
oh fuck, I gotta go. I gotta yeah. go back and put mm. on my role. I gotta yeah. put on my job role and be a fucking cog in the machine, even though <sighs> the machine I was working it's was interesting. weird. You you said I gotta go. And you know, for me that that just makes me think I gotta go. Like the I that I know has to go and I have to become this, this other, other me. person, this other me. Yeah. Dude, it, it, go. It, it does feel a little like that at some jobs. I, I mean, because I think if you're doing your, if you work in a company and you're doing your job well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, just, I don't know. I feel like I was just trying to dig too deep as a reach. No, no, I, no. I think, no, <laughs> that's I think, great. No, no, I think that shit's real. That's what I'm saying is like, if you're doing your job well. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you have bosses, like. It's not about you at a fucking job. It's, it's, it's not about you. You yeah. have to know what is the role that you the role, need to yeah, fill. Yeah, yeah. What That's does your boss who owns or runs the company need? Like it's yeah. not, it's so fucking rarely at so many jobs about you, your wants or your opinions. Like yeah, most of the time, done. especially an hourly like day job. Like so, so you do have to surrender some of your Yourself, I, right? some of yeah. the me. And Ooh. that shit can wear you down over oh, yeah. time. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. When I worked at the uh, law office, um, <laughs> I, that, okay. So the commute from Studio City to uh, Beverly Hills every day, um, I literally ended up crashing my car, like, because I drank one morning beforehand because I didn't want to go so bad because, mm -hmm. like, when I would get there, I wouldn't have nothing. I would have nothing to do. They'd be like, just sit and play on your phone the whole time you're here. And I said, oh, I, I can't. Oh, I'm ooh. not one of those people who can like Empty zone hours. out and just like, ooh. nope, nope, nope. So I cleaned out their entire storage room. Like they had an underground in the parking lot. I would fucking load these like the boxes on this dolly, bring them back up, go through all of their old files. I did this like maybe 30 times, right? Like heavy ass work, da, da, da. So when I'm there, like I'm in it too, but getting there, I, 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 I was way more reckless and stupid than I should have been. Like it, it drove me to a place of fucking insanity. Dang. Was that Just, the last time you had a car? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And I like, I didn't get caught for it. DUI. Thank, thank God. But that, that was what contributed to the accident and nobody was hurt or anything, but yeah. it, it was a huge wake up call. And then I didn't have a car to get over there. I sort of just self sabotaged the situation right. for myself. Oh, now right. I can't go there anymore. But I mean, it's, 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 it, it, isn't it weirdly counterintuitive? Like, it, as maybe a kid, or if, if you're not thinking about it deeply, you could think, like, what? Go collect a paycheck and not have to work? Oh, that should be a good situation. Cool. No. Nah. Nah, for, same for me. Like yeah. slow days at work, but I, I prefer it fast as fuck. When it's slow and you have nothing to do, the day crawls by. But yeah, then, yeah, but then yeah. we have time to ourselves. What the fuck do we do? Nothing. So like when you go, like, I don't know. It's it's weird that you don't take that opportunity to be paid while you would be doing nothing at home anyway right. in the same time. Right. You know what I mean? But then when but you're at work, but it's, it's like- But it's because you're not, you're not relaxed. You're still at work. Right, you right, know what right, I mean? right. You're, yeah. you're yeah. still- on yeah but just with nothing to do yeah. there's something exhausting about there it there is like, you're like the day crawls yeah. yeah 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 i worked too hard there i they they literally gave me like a bonus because i i took care of this like underground thing for them i loved working when i was there and just like the time got to pass but yeah i don't i can i, I commend anybody who does like a 9 to 5 like that like i think just because it wasn't in myself growing up, like it, it was such a switch in my thirties yeah. to, to do that. That's why I sort of had a complete re rejection to it. But I can't imagine like that, there's gotta be a mental weight that you just kind of get used to. Oh yeah, no, uh, adulting, yeah, entering that that uh, workforce is uh, is wild and sacrificing those hours. Cause yeah. you are, like we said, handing over those hours where you could be doing something productive that you wanna do, but you have to give it to be productive for somebody else or sit there and do nothing. Yeah, I think the goal out there, if you're not pursuing, you know, some uh, unrealistic dreams, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the goal out there is like, find a job. <laughs> you might not love any job, but find a job that at least doesn't make you feel like you're like losing a part of your fucking soul, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I think like there's a, 
rather than aiming for the stars with your day job, just try and not be in the fucking yeah. basement. Like there, there you go. Cause that's, that's when it really like the days drag on and like yeah. you start to lose months and years. Cause you've accepted this thing where you have to like, literally like lose part of your fucking spirit to do it. Yeah. That's gnarly. And unfortunately I feel like so many jobs end up that way because employees are often not, seen or cared for as individuals mm -hmm. beings mm -hmm. they are they are yeah, units of the organization. yeah they are plugged into in a format to and a fucking yeah this is how you get your paycheck this is, uh, and there's no variables that i care about you yeah. know what i mean like you're either yeah. here or you're not yeah uh i don't know that sounds gnarly to uh, the way our lives are set up i i, I see a lot of people pushing uh for a four day work, work week, week rather than the five and I feel like that would be so good for people's spirits. I don't know what it would do for productivity. It might make productivity better because when you actually have more downtime, yeah. you can come back with can, more energy. Can we really be honest about where productivity is now, though? What, what are you talking about, AI? Taking? Productivity oh, in the systems that we have set up, even in a microcosm like the law office, comparatively to the macrocosm of like all the other bigger systems. Like, um, time out, what was the fuck was I just saying? We were talking about productivity. You think productivity oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean, oh my hot. God, how many how many things are put there just to be put there? There's Dude, no, yeah. no exactly. efficiency. No There's I'm it, saying yeah. thirty percent of yeah. what you guys do yeah. is working. Right. Yeah. Seventy percent right. is, is some kind of antiquated hours. yeah paperwork yeah. that or doesn't just instructions yeah. that are empty and don't yield any real. Uh, You're not output. gonna get anything oh, and from you this. You want to fucking yeah. kill someone's spirit like you, like them being like, "Well, just sit there." It's like. That's not. Yeah, there's show no me reward that you care about that. what we're doing well, here, so I can have something that feels fulfilling. At yeah, well, least. and like, give me a task a that task. makes my time feel at least like it's worth Valid. something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me something to work on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, then it's like I'm sacrificing my time and energy for something that you don't even care about. Because there's no real instruction going on here. Yeah, we're all just here, fucking. And Hanging. I think productivity will double when people are like well rested enough and like they just have a little more time to be to regulate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like exactly when you have somebody constantly on autopilot, I think there's just be more more of an opportunity for them to, to switch off of autopilot. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right now that's all you can kind of live in. Like anybody who has a nine to five is in a survival mode. Yeah. yeah. Like that's what's really oh, fucking it, sad and scary. You can go on whatever fucking vacation for the week off you have a year. Yeah. That's not freedom. No, it's that's not. That's not freedom. Even the nice house you live in, the things you get to give your kids. Like that is a big cost. It really yep. is. If Monday through Friday you're in the office, some jobs, you know, from eight or nine to fucking seven or eight, you're doing work. Like it's some jobs aren't nine to fives. Like yeah. you know, my mom's an accountant. Like Oof. that job just requires almost 12 hours of work of day to get the job done. Yeah. There, there's a very that one is full work all the time. Uh, if you're doing that Monday through Friday, so Saturday and Sunday, like that's not enough time to even. Down you need to no, yeah. You're talking about five sevenths of your week does not belong to you. Oof. Like, that's more than two Ouch. thirds of your week. Yeah, going to something, that, something else. That is that's rough. And if it's meaningless, then that really hurts. It really stings. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it mean, made me just yeah, really, really have a lot of respect for. Oh yeah, you have to people who literally have done this their whole lives. Like it, it could make me emotional because it's something that I would. I would have to work so hard to be able to like do and have as a part of my life. And I get it. Like you start that way. It's not so easy to switch back over, but it's, it's brutal. It's brutal. And people just handle it. And on top of that, they handle their kids and like their home when yeah, they go home. And, yeah. and like, when is, when, when do is you that, ever come up for air? Especially when you're talking about having kids and then you have to send them off to school. It's like, what even is the family life at that point? It's like, how much your kids belong to whatever system is raising them. And you're in this other system. And to, you meet up to sleep, to, to cohabitate at to night. Sleep. Yeah. Like it's. It, uh, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. look over the kids homework or something like that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's uncomfortable. And I think. The world needs to maybe figure it out. Mm -hmm. I would love a people-centric solution to, mm -hmm. you know, the workforce. Yeah, I mean, like different cultures have different things, right? Don't they? Don't they siesta in fucking Spain oh, and Italy Spain. and yeah. shit? Like yeah. they take they take afternoons off. Amazing. Where they go Amazing. Home, literally go home, yeah. cook food, relax yeah. for a couple hours, 
go I back, get a couple more hours there. of work. Like, mm. that, it, that obviously, there nice. are smaller places and easier to get around. Yeah. And, exactly. Well, yeah, you're not commuting a fucking hour and a half. Right. Your job's yeah. close. But yeah, I mean, that's that's at least an understanding of humanity. There should be like a room, like, you know, how the how cops well, have or whatever, like, like go take 24, like whatever. Cops go well, and sleep when they're working they start to do with these like high tech companies, right? Like Google, like there's like, there's like yeah. the hangout and the nap yeah. rooms yeah. and fucking get your froyo, yeah. like yeah. Be, be alive. Yeah, like yeah. you want to know how to work on productivity. <laughs> you treat them like they're living, <laughs> living hold organisms. On, on. <laughs> hey now, hold on, <laughs> right? Humans that need uh, nutrients and relaxation. But then I, produ not space. only will you double productivity because that's just taking it at like everybody's productivity. Like you're, you're quadrupling productivity if you can have everybody off autopilot and doing their full potential. Yeah, that's facts. You guys ever, and this is, this is a tangent, but um, I was going to say off the cuff, just joking a little bit, but VR headsets, you know, to, you know, give people that break. You put on the VR uh, headset and you're in whatever, you know. Swanky place you want to be, or not even swanky, but just comfortable uh, space. Be you could be on the beach in the VR set. Set a uh, Meta Meta Quest. My girl's job just got some, and they sent, and they're amazing. I love it. It transports you to whole other realms. But have you guys ever seen the um, the cows that they're putting the VR headsets on so that the meat tastes better? The fuck? <laughs> they're putting VR headsets on these cows on cattle so that their their meat is tastier uh, so that the cattle doesn't uh or the cows don't know that they are in this death camp pretty much it's so dystopian i hate it it is super dystopian but i'm like you know it, as we're thinking up solutions for yeah. how to you nah, know, see even the like, thought <laughs> of like oh hate your, hate your job just go to the fucking VR beach, no, brother. I know, I know, so I know that dystopian, they're gonna try dude. to they're gonna try to toss that off to it's people so, as a solution that's insane dystopian yeah. It's a sad word. Oh, feeling some type of way? Just go to this fake reality. Go to the happy place. Yeah. I hate it. Mm -hmm. Better than pills. Better than giving somebody <laughs> hey, pills. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, well. Hey, Don't knock until you try. Yeah, it's, it's come on now. Damn. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, you got any Monday tips, guys? <sighs> well, Monday is... Monday is not the start of your week. Sunday is the start of the week, okay? Hey, right. So... Maybe that will we'll make your week longer. Yeah. And also, how do y'all look at weeks in your head? Like, just get get um, accustomed to how you look at weeks. Like, do you look at them like this in your head or does it kind of go like this? Because to mm. me, it goes in like a loop like this. Mm. And so, I don't know. Sometimes just how we visualize things can be. Yeah. Is it linear or is it like a yeah. clock? To like me, it goes like in a, that way. How do, do you, you guys see it? prefer viewing it like it's a circle? Well, it Continuous doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. What about you? There's only one way to think about the months of the year. Racetrack. Uh, <laughs> racetrack, of course. No, no, I vibe with that. I vibe with that. I think everything yeah. is, yeah. I rarely know what day of the week it is, but I live a weird life. I've never been good at I don't. I don't know what that meant. The, the, the point is <laughs> that uh, Monday can be whatever you want it to be. Hey, yeah. If you are vibing high enough. Hey. Um, my tip is. Tip yes. My tip is don't make a day of the week your enemy. Hey. Um, you know, okay, because, Sun Tzu. <laughs> because, Sun because Tzu. guess what? Every week that's is going to enemy. occur. Like <laughs> literally it's going to occur every single week. And I get the Sunday scaries and I get the shit we talked about. Like you're going back to work, that anxiety, but if that is the path you're on and you're not in a place where you can change it, then it is also in your power and responsibility to try and help yourself out a little bit. If you've like accepted every week, you're like, oh, Mondays fucking suck. I mean, then that's your life 52 weeks a year. That's brutal. Um, so try and uh, shift your perspective on it a little bit like Ned did and wear your favorite undies. Yeah. Wow, I, I you know what Memorial Day and Labor Day things like this must be heaven for those people. Yeah, true. Oh, I mean, right? yeah, Truly. I mean, nice heaven. Three holidays. days. Heaven. Holidays. Uh, you got Mondays? any tips for uh, chimpanzee attacks? For Monday and Mondays. Oh no, for for chimpanzee attacks. Uh, yeah, don't don't mess. Hold with on them. to your nuts, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, 
As long as you can. You might rip your hands off first. Can you imagine? Because I'm sure you're trying to cover yourself, and they're just eating away anything that's covering your stuff. Ooh, chimpanzees are the worst, guys. I've never met a chimpanzee in, in, in real life. I would love to. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from from afar, yes. Wow. You know what, Devin? No, I, I would love I would love to get you a pent chimp. A pension? <laughs> you, you want me to have a pension? I want you to have a pet chimp, okay? <laughs> I'd love one. Yeah, I'm going to get I you a pet chimp. If I could raise it from when it was a baby, it would be my friend. Oh, yeah, now Honestly, that, that would be lit. No, seen, no. Have you, you guys, seen, oh, but they have turn you seen everybody that sometimes. does that, have, they've turned on the person. Not that everybody. Person is that, no, hippos, hippos nope, really There good. are so many people who have wild animals that they raised since they I were cubs and their homies. I absolutely believe that those are lucky people. That's not because that animal doesn't doesn't know that they can be Think about it. They're just waiting for the chance. You know what I'm saying? Because, no, no, no. no. There are such nice stories about people raising yes. bear cubs and this and that to be killed but, but that later. One story but there's also about stories of raising bear cubs to not be killed. Right. Hey. Eh, so it all depends on how you raise oh, yeah, some it. People Maybe raise, you're a bad mother. Some people raise kids and the kids <laughs> well, become that murderers. Well, exactly. you know, so, that's right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If Greatest I fear. raised that little monkey, he'd love me for life. I have to leave. Um, you guys are great. I'll see you Wait, next week. I still got to give a tip. Mm. Oh, oh uh, I mean, the, the Monday tip, it's just a tough one. Ja, guys, perspective matters, okay? Um, it's going to keep coming around the bend, so get Ayo, used to it. Pew. Get accustomed to it. Get accustomed to it. <laughs> Rain it in, Lindsay. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Smash that box. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the set's falling apart. We're out of here, guys. See Love ya. You. <laughs>for watching this week's episode. Uh, guys, shout out. is it time for <laughs> Super, Super Friends Dance? Thank you for being patrons. Thank we you. love you. Special shout out. Thanks for making this pa- uh, yep. th- this podcast possible. Go to patreon.com slash netspod if you want more from that us part. and to support us. We love you. Love Thank you. you. See you next week. Bye.